million Americans are living with Alzheimer's, but there is an innovative project that could end up making a big difference for families who are currently or could in the future be impacted by this disease. And it's happening right here in Syracuse. Joining us now, Lisa Sonneborn, president of i Research. That's a fast-growing biotech company. They started in Lafayette. I actually first introduced you all to them back in 2017, but it's been on a steady rise. Lisa, so good to see you. Thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So Lisa, you're teaming up with Loretto on this Alzheimer's mm -hmm. project. What makes this so unique to what's out there already? Yeah, so I think what's really unique about it is actually the partnership element we're doing here. Um, historically, Alzheimer's clinical trials have primarily excluded people in um, long-term care, specifically independent living, assisted living and memory care facilities. And when we think about people with Alzheimer's disease or other cognitive impairments, there are millions of them who end up in residential facilities due to the nature of their physical disabilities or cognitive decline. Um, so what's really unique here is that there are almost no other facilities out there in the United States that, it's, that have made it a priority to partner with research groups like we are um, to be able to make these opportunities available to those patients and families. So, so that's kind of one of the big pieces yeah. of what. So you will go right into Loretto facilities then? <laughs> so what typically happens, yeah. So um, there are specific clinical trials um, and opportunities that are appropriate for different kind of patient populations. Mm -hmm. And what was unique here was the opportunity that we saw with Loretto based on um, who they served and being able to bring this to them. Because again, one of the barriers that we see in clinical trials is that um, in the United States, a lot of these studies are done in outpatient facilities and asking patients with moderate to severe forms of dementia to leave the place that they are comfortable mm. and where their family feels they are comfortable and safe and stable to go in and participate in a clinical trial is in itself um, burdensome. So what we did is we found a way to um, identify the appropriate facilities where we could educate families and the residents on what these opportunities were. And those families and residents could then invite us if they were interested mm -hmm. in having those opportunities to come directly gotcha. to the individual Understood. to be able to talk to them about the study and potentially offer that opportunity. Yeah. So, so what are you hoping then to learn from this kind of study that we don't yeah. have now? Is it a way of treating yeah. people? Is, are they drugs? Are they a little bit of both? Well, what do we hope to get out of this? So i does all of the above. Um, so we do therapeutic studies as well as diagnostic studies. This uh, specific trial is a diagnostic. Um, and what, what's important here is to understand what we currently have uh, to be able to identify this disease and what we're hoping to achieve. So the answer to your question is we're evaluating a biomarker. A biomarker is a way of having a more definitive diagnosis and potentially someday an even earlier diagnosis of the disease process. And the way that we validate that and gather that data is by working with individuals both with and without the disease process who are willing to participate in an investigational PET scan. You're already um, getting a, a lot of momentum behind this project though, right? We're getting, I mean, yeah, yeah, we're right getting now. a lot of interest and I think Globally? a big part Globally even? So this, <clears throat> this study is being done actually all over the United States. Mm. Um, and there are, I think, about 30 sites actively working on it. So 30 physicians across the United States and independent research facilities all executing the same protocol to try to gather this data as a team. And what's really quite incredible, um, we were a latecomer to this study. We were added on after, you know, almost a year after the study started, mm. and in a very short period of time have become um, a significant enroller in the mm. study, which I think speaks to the fact that we are identifying kind of a missed opportunity, which is that in, in many parts of the country, this really isn't, um, this opportunity for patients in these facilities doesn't exist. So when we were able to open up and host educational events and talk to families and tell them if they're interested, they can talk to us about it and that it's always voluntary, we got kind of an overwhelming response that's made us, you know, a, a pretty significant contributor to this data already. Oh, that is great. Uh, Lisa, I'm running out of time here. Um, I definitely would like to have you back again as we kind of move along uh, through this process because, you know, it's Absolutely. probably pretty cutting edge stuff. Um, and I definitely it's really, like it. It's really yeah. incredible. And I think what we're seeing is we're seeing a response from families, caregivers, patients, all of whom, um, 
are interested in helping. And even if this isn't the study that's the right fit for them, the fact that we're getting kind of that emotional and excited response about the type of work we're doing, I think that talks about kind of the purpose that this that this brings to the community. Awesome. Lisa, let's do this again. Thanks for joining us now. Appreciate it. Thank you.